Hello, Epic families. In case you forgot, I am Nick, and this is... I'm Kendra. Kendra. Kendra is with us tonight. She has been a part of our church family for quite a while. Yeah, I think since I was in seventh, eighth grade-ish, mm -hmm. so... I think I remember when your family moved here and you joined us in the middle school. Yeah. It was yeah. a good time. <laughs> so, we're excited to have Kendra with us tonight. So, a couple of announcements. Reminder, if you have not passed out little three by five note cards to write a couple of questions on. We'll address those next week when we will be back together for Epic Family Reunion. It's not the last Wednesday of the month this month because the last Wednesday of this month will all be together in the hub gathering space across the parking lot over there watching Randy Smith together, having a good time talking about upcoming stuff with Easter, and it should be pretty exciting. I'm excited for that. Absolutely. So next week, we'll be going over the questions that you submit on those note cards that you should hopefully have by now. Also, reminder, we're going to be printing a new song booklet. So a, an art contest for that. Send it to me, email it to me, or, or hand it to your leaders or your epic family. It can be a painting, a drawing, hand, charcoal, gum, I don't care, digital, whatever it is, and we're going to hold a, a little contest, and the winner will get a, a $10 gift card to Rocket Fizz down at the village. It's pretty awesome. I like Rocket Fizz. And we'll also get their place. art displayed. Like, that's yeah, it's going to be on the cover cool. of the booklet like for the next few months. That's awesome. Which is really fun. So. Really awesome. Good stuff. And also, Momentum on the Road. Register for that. We're going to the Goshen event. So don't register for something in another state. I mean, you can, but you're on your own to get there. there. Yeah. We're not going to take you. <laughs> but we're going to Goshen, and that should be a pretty awesome time. I think the last announcement, oh, a lot of them, is mulch. We are, again, having the great mulch sale of 2021. So if you would like to earn some extra money to pay for things like Momentum and Retreats, and other activities we do, mulch selling is a great way to do that, where we give you some information about mulch, and it's all posted on the parent Facebook page, the student Facebook page, and it should have gone out in an email to all of your parents as well. And also our youth staff all got those emails also, so they could help you out with it. But you have info, and you walked around the community and people around you and, and tried to sell mulch, and for every bag of mulch you sell, you gain a dollar twenty-five that can go in your kind of a, your money fund here at the church to pay for those other activities. And then May first, all the mulch in the whole world gets delivered to our church, and then you, as the mulch seller, deliver the mulch to the buyers. So, fun time. In a nutshell, that's it. But it's a great way to earn money. We've had some students earn over five or six hundred dollars just insane just from selling mulch <laughs> like that's a lot ah. it's pretty awesome pretty awesome okay i think that's everything so back to our series this is our Yay. third week of different for a reason where we're talking about men and women and how god values men and women in scripture which i think has been really cool this is so fun to be a part of and, and to grow and to talk with liz and brandy and now kendra about this stuff together i think it's been a joy so we are going to start today by reviewing a little bit of just remembering how in the first lesson with Liz and I here, we talked about how God very purposefully made both male and female, very specifically, and he obviously cared about them both a lot and even said, let us make humans, men and women, in our image. We both have the image of God, all men, all women all humans. And that's more than I think we can ever really understand. Yeah. And he also calls us both to the same ultimate calling. Now that we are under the new covenant of Christ, our calling is to make disciples. That's it. It's oh, pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. We are called to make disciples and together yeah. we can do that better than we can on our own. Yeah. So today we're going to take some time and look a little bit about, Kendra's going to look at a couple of men in scripture and what does it look like for God to value a couple of men. And then I'm going to look at what it, uh, how God values a couple of women in scripture. And then we're going to tag team a section where we walk through and look at all the really specific ways that God 
really values women in scripture. And we'll talk about that more before we get there. So Kendra, show us a couple of ways how God values yeah. men in scripture. I'm so excited about this. Um, so I'm going to give you an Old Testament and a New Testament example. Um, we're going to start with Noah. So God um, shows the way that he values men in the way that he values Noah. Um, we'll actually stop here. I want you guys to first, before we get into it, you're going to read Genesis 6, 8 through 14a, like the first half of that verse. And then you're also going to read Genesis 6, 18 through 22. So I'll give you a second to do that. Cool. So you got to read um, just this awesome account of God speaking really intimately to Noah. Um, and he has this phrase that he says, um, it says that Noah found favor in God's eyes, which we can skip over really fast. We can just be like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, clearly he found favor. Like he builds this ark and he saves humanity. Awesome. Yay. But like that phrase is used later in scripture to also describe Mary, the mother of Christ. Um, it, it's so significant that they are both valued in that way. They both find favor in God's eyes. Um, and so God calls Noah righteous. Um, and we know that righteousness only comes from having a relationship with God. So it's so clear. He's in this relationship. God then is telling him, hey, here's my plan for um, how I'm going to restore humanity here is why I'm I'm so upset and here's how you're going to be a part of this. He invites him to be a part of his his restoration. Um and you know God's talking about how the earth is violent and and Noah wasn't a part of that violence. He's uh, it said that he was blameless among the people. And so even in this we see that like God had such a a wonderful relationship with Noah that Noah was fulfilling the first and second greatest commandments long before Jesus let us know what those were. Noah was loving God and he was loving his neighbor because he wasn't, he wasn't a part of all the corruption. Um, and so then God uses him to save humanity and establishes this covenant with him, which we then later see um, when Christ comes, he saves humanity and he establishes this lasting covenant um, so it's just such a cool way that that God really uses Noah and values him in scripture the way he talks about him. Um, so that's Old Testament. And then we're going to jump to the New Testament. And Joseph is a man that um, I think often really showcases how much God values men because God chose Joseph to be his own adoptive father which like, just think about that for a second and how cool that is that God was like, I want him to, to father me. That's really beautiful. Um, so before we say any more, I want you to stop now and read Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Um, so as you read in scripture, this is, you know, Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant knows that he's not the father and he's he's a good jewish man he wants to follow the law and he knows that adultery means divorce and so he's going to divorce mary um but he also loves her and doesn't want her to come to public ridicule and shame as much as he can help it and so he's going to divorce her quietly because not only is he trying to uphold the law but he's being incredibly kind um and then he gets this dream from the lord and Immediate. Is that like God's equivalent of like a like a text or like calling on a smartphone? Essentially, that's a, an old fashioned text. Like, hey man, it's fine. Um, but like, yeah, as soon as he gets this room, he wakes up and he's like, I'm not divorcing her. Like, he believes God, and that faith. Like, we don't we don't talk enough about how much faith it takes to be like, oh yeah, that dream I had where it says that my fiance who's pregnant, not by me, is pregnant from God. I'm gonna believe that. So he believes God um, and takes Mary immediately to, to be his wife and honors and respects her and respects this pregnancy and is excited to be the father of Christ. Um, and then he does. He fathers God in a way. Um, and he teaches him carpentry and then Jesus becomes a carpenter. And so they clearly have this like really unique special bond 
that God himself chose to have with Joseph. Um, and he's also, Joseph is from the line of David, which um, in the lineage of Christ, it was always like, he's going to be from the, from the line of David. And that's through Joseph, his adoptive father, which I think is just so like, as if it wasn't enough that God was like, I want you to be involved in the raising and the nurturing of the Messiah. He also then like fulfills a prophecy through Joseph. So yeah, I, I love the way that God showcases how much he values men through the way that he loves and chooses Joseph. Yeah. And then to even like double side that prophecy in the, in the, the birth ancestry is that, you know, we're talking about valuing Joseph in the way that God values Mary. And that is so incredible as well, because Mary is also from the line of David. You're like, hang on. So they like, they come together to bring about the Messiah. And that's so cool that God uses that shows Joseph in that way and shows Mary in that same way. What, a, what an incredible honor. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's so, cool. so I'm going to talk about a couple of women as well, one Old Testament and one new. First, I want to talk about Rahab. So go ahead and read Joshua chapter 2, and then also Joshua 6, verses 23 to 25, and then Matthew 1, 5. So you just saw how God used Rahab, a prostitute, to turn to, turn to God. She, she was not from, you know, she didn't grow up in a God-loving household at all. This people group was very, very opposed to God, uh, Jericho. And she was the city, in, the, in the city of Jericho, and she was instrumental in uh, saving her family, the only family that was saved in Jericho from God's judgment. She turned to God. So let's put it into context a little bit. I love this, this passage, this story, because remember, we're going to be talking about Exodus on Sunday mornings coming up pretty soon, but Exodus just happened like the previous generation. So imagine, if you will, the strongest, most powerful world government gets taken down in overt ways by a god, and like everyone in the world knows it and sees it. And Rahab recognizes, oh, this God, your Yahweh, he's actually the real God. And, and I believe that, and I'm on board with him. Like, I want to be with, I'm on your team. It's like, incredible faith to like go against her entire culture and call so him cool. God. Yes. So she, she does that as, as a, a, a prostitute, someone who is, probably not seen in the best regard in her own culture and especially not in our, you know, Christian culture today, but God values her faith so much in her choice that Rahab is also in the lineage of Jesus. So cool. She gets in there too. Like that's awesome. That's awesome. What are, how does, how incredible is it that God values not just, oh, the, the good women, but God values all women regardless of their background or mistakes they've made in the past or mistakes anybody's made in the past god loves us we're made in his image and that's so cool she's also one of the gentiles in the lineage of christ too which is just mm -hmm. so awesome and then in the new testament we're going to look at lydia so pause here and read acts 16 verse 15. so here we see that lydia she is the first European person to believe in Christ and to be baptized. That's amazing. That's like the gospel going out from the, the, the Middle East, from that area of Israel and, and that section over there, spreading out. She's the first European to believe in God, to believe in Jesus and be baptized. And not only that, but she then later on financially like funds so much of what Paul and his later ministry. And there's stuff where Paul is like really reaching out to people like, I need help. I need this. I need that. And Lydia is like, I can make that happen. And that's awesome that God uses her to further the ministry of his kingdom right from the stage one. Yeah. It is incredible. Lydia 
just has a, an incredible story. And I would, I would love to be able to like one day in the future in heaven, hang out with Lydia, like tell me the story. I want to know how, like, how did God use you and work through you to bring about Christianity in Europe? Yeah. She's, the, she was the gateway. Role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to read through uh, a list. This is from the book Worthy. Brandy held it up and talked about it last week. That one. So we're going to read some, some excerpts from this about how God values women. And why are we only talking about women right now? Well, honestly, it's, it's sad, but a lot of times in modern Christianity and modern church culture, it is very much the, the women that are looked down on. And we have all these verses about women should be silent and obey all men always that are really taken out of context and abused and really put women in a really negative light and a and really bad spot that, that we're not okay with, I'm not okay with. And we want to, like Brandy said last week, we want to turn that volume louder on the women's side. Not that we're putting down men, absolutely not. Obviously God values men as well. But we want to just increase that volume a little bit about women. And I think it's incredible to see how God values women Absolutely. through scripture. So we're going to read a, a couple of these and, uh, and interact with this. So first, a woman's absence is the first thing declared not good in creation. It, it wasn't sin. It wasn't the fall. It was the fact that there were no women. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty that's pretty cool. The first recorded song in human history is the man rejoicing over the woman. There you go, ladies. The first song in history was about you. That's awesome. Very sweet song. The woman is the first to be named at, uh, as an enemy against the serpent or against Satan. She's the first one to be declared an enemy against Satan. That's pretty cool. And a woman will give birth to the serpent crushing seed, the Messiah. So God's going to use a woman to bring about the Messiah. We know that now was Mary, like we talked about before. But right away, God said that in Genesis. That's such a big honor that God would even just point that out early on. Like, hey, women, you have, you're you going to play a huge role. Um, we also have the first recorded words of faith were spoken by Eve, which that's just... We love testimony and testifying, and that's something that God really wants us to do. And the first example of that was a woman. It was Eve. Um, and Eve is also the first person recorded to ever speak the name of Yahweh, which is, that's in your Bible when you see the capital, the Lord. Um, that's Yahweh. That's his name that he calls himself. Um, and that's just, that's such a beautiful, exciting thing. That's such an intimate thing to call him Yahweh. Um the first recorded appearance of the angel of the Lord is to Hagar, um, which that's just super epic. Like she's in such a weird situation and such a hard situation and God sends an angel to her. Like that's so beautiful. Um, and the first character in the Old Testament to give God the name, um, to give God a name, the God who sees um, is also Hagar. It's also a woman, which is Again, such an intimate act that God would allow a woman to do. Yeah. And then we have the first and only time Abraham, Father Abraham from the song, that Abraham is, record, is, recorded as, is recorded as weeping is at the death of his wife, Sarah. The only time. Mm -hmm. The first declaration of unconditional election is made to Rebecca. She is also the first to inquire of the Lord or like, ask God some questions and like, God, what's like, what's going on here? She's the first one that we know of who is bold enough yeah. to approach God with questions, obviously in a, an appropriate and respectful honoring <laughs> way, but otherwise it won't be an honor, but <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And a woman, Miriam is the first recorded to dance in worship. I love this one yeah. because we often talk about like David danced before the Lord. And that's like how we talk about like joyful worship, mm -hmm. but like, Miriam sets the precedence, and that's just super yeah. awesome. Yep. Um, oh, oh, how do you say that? Zelophod. Zelophod. That's a fun. That's a fun biblical name. So the daughters of Zelophod, 
thank you, <laughs> were the first people that God declares as right in their request and in their judgment. And this, I looked this up and got really excited about this. So they are, um, their father has died. They don't have any brothers. And they're like, we want to carry on our father's name among the tribe and we want his property. We want the property that he had to belong to us. It's just his daughters. And they've been denied this. And then um, I think Moses asks God like, hey, is this okay? And God's like, yeah, they're right in their request. They should have this property. His, the father's name should carry on through his daughters. And so like, that is such a bold request. And it's the first time God declares a request right, which I just thought was really awesome. Um, and then a woman, Hannah, is the first person recorded to speak the divine title Yahweh of hosts, which also in some Bibles is Lord Almighty. Um, and we use that all the time. And that was coined by Hannah. Nice job, Hannah. <laughs> and a woman, Elizabeth, so we're jumping to the New Testament now. A woman, Elizabeth, and her child are the first recorded people to recognize the Messiah's arrival. She is the first to speak about the Messiah coming. That's so cool. It's crazy. And then obviously a woman, Mary, composes the first hymn of the new covenant age. And then a woman, Anna, is the first to speak publicly and broadly of the arrival of Jesus. And a woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the first to expect and request a miraculous sign in Jesus' public ministry. This is really cool to me. It's like we see, later on, we see people all over, like, begging Jesus to do this stuff, do this stuff, do this stuff. And his first public miracle is because of his mom. Jesus' mom is like, hey, Jesus. I know you can. I know you this. can. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> He submits to her and like says, yeah, okay, let's, let's do this. Like, that's so cool that she does that. Mm -hmm. And then a woman, the Samaritan at the well, is the first recorded Gentile woman to whom Jesus reveals himself as the Messiah. She is also the first to tell a non-Jewish community about him. Yeah. So here, this, the Samaritan, which there's a whole lot to that story that we're not going to get into now. She's the first to hear from Jesus himself that he's the Messiah, and then the first to declare it to people outside of the Jewish community. It's so incredible. In so many levels that we're not going to get into, it's like the biggest honor ever. And he gives that to the Samaritan woman. Let's skip down to that one. Okay. Uh, women were the first believing people tasked with proclaiming the news of the resurrection. Um, so the guards at the tomb told of his resurrection, but they weren't doing it in faith. Um, the women are really the first ones to then proclaim, like, he's risen. Um, women were the first to see and enter the empty tomb. That's um, something we're going to talk about with Easter coming up. We're going to talk a lot about the empty tomb, and women were the first ones to bear witness to that. Um, women are then also the first to see the resurrected Lord, and then they're the first to touch and worship him. Um, they fall at his feet and they hold on to his feet, and they're just so, so overjoyed that he has resurrected. Because um, they also very clearly bore witness to his death. They oversaw his burial. So it, there's no doubt in their mind that he has been dead and has come back to life and is so clearly their Lord the way he claimed to be. Um, and then a woman, Mary Magdalene, is, to, is the first to hear the resurrected Christ um, speak. And the first name that he utters is her name. Um, that really beautiful scene in the garden where she's confused and she thinks he's a gardener and he says her name. He says Mary. And she just weeps and falls at his feet. Um, I want to get this next one. Yeah. And I think we'll have to wrap up on this. Absolutely. But there's so many more. There's so, <laughs> there's many so more. much. <laughs> but the mistreatment and neglect of women, specifically widows, mm -hmm was the impetus or the reason why that the first deacons were ever appointed in church was because women in a certain church weren't being taken care of properly. And Paul and, and well, frankly, God was like, that's not okay. Like, that's no, we're not doing that. So specifically set up the deacon system to help figure out and take care of 
widows and women more appropriately. Like that's so cool. What an incredible way that God honors and values women. So I want us to end this video really just by acknowledging how much God values men, values women yeah, so clearly in scripture clearly. all over the place. And we'll talk about this a little bit more next week at our, uh, at, our at our panel and live in person there Wednesday night. But man, I am so thankful that God made both men and women in his image yeah. and that we both have the same mission to make disciples. Go make disciples. Go make disciples. That's our calling. Yeah. So that is what we want to call you to do today as well. We see our value as both having been made in the image of God and our value in an, an equal calling of making disciples and we can do it better together. Have a great epic family. See you next time.